Gives his bride in marriage? I do. So she may have your bride and step forward. I'm going to ask the congregation to, the people in here, just to stand up for a moment. We're going to uh, have a prayer. And then you can be seated. Father God, we thank you today for this special time, allowing us to uh, celebrate this joyous occasion of this young couple getting married before you. And Father, I ask you, Lord, that your love would abound in their lives. Lord, that each day that their love would grow stronger and stronger as they live as husband and wife together. And Lord, I pray that... Uh, you would help them in every decision they have to make, and I ask you to guide them by your Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Lord, for your blessing upon them and everything they do, Lord God. And I thank you that their life would bring glory to you all the days of their life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And you may be seated. We are gathered here today to witness this holy union between Chris and Sierra. I want to share about a little bit about marriage. Marriage is a union. It is the closest relationship between two human beings. When a man and a woman decide to join together, they should do it with full realization of their responsibilities. When two born-again believers come together before witnesses, and make a public profession of their mutual love and devotion, pronouncing vows and pledging their lives to each other, a miracle takes place. They become one in God's sight. The husband and wife are joined together as Jesus is joined to the church. And I say this to Chris and Sierra. The world has the idea that marriage is simply a legal contract, but marriage is more than a contract. Marriage is a covenant we enter into. As you pledge your vows to each other and before God, and these witnesses understand the power of God is released in this union. And let me read a portion of scripture in the book of Ephesians 5.22, the first 31, it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men love to love their own wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself, for no man ever yet hateth his own flesh, 
but nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall become one flesh. Chris, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? I have. And Chris, have you received the Holy Spirit to dwell in you? I have. And Sierra, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? I have. And have you received the Holy Spirit to dwell in you? I have. And to the witnesses here, Jesus said in, in the Gospel of Matthew, Again, I say to you, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done of them of my Father in heaven. We must never tamper in any way with this union, but be an encouragement and a source of wisdom and help to this couple. Now we're going to say some vows that are very important. Because you not only say these vows, you can turn to, to share. You don't only say in these vows to each other, but to God and to these witnesses. This is very important, and I know you understand what it, what it means, because we, we did counseling for four sessions about this. So Chris, do you take Sierra as your wife, as your own flesh, to love her even as Christ loves the church, to protect her and care for her the rest of your life? Then turn to her and make this profession of your faith. Say this, Chris. I, Chris, I, Chris according to the word of God, according to the word of God, leave my father and my mother, leave my father and my mother, and I join myself, and, and I join myself to you, to you, to be a husband to you, to be a husband to you. From this moment forward, from this moment forward, we shall be one. And I'm saying this to Sierra. Do you take Chris as your husband, submitting yourself to him as unto the Lord, showing reverence to him as the head of this union for the rest of your life? I do. Sierra, I want you to repeat this. I, Sierra, I, Sierra according to the word of God, according to the word of God submit I, myself to you. To be a wife to you from this moment forward, we shall be one. Now we're going to have rings. Tina, you can stand over here. Chris, I want to just say this. A ring is a very precious thing. It represents a token of your faith and love. This ring is made of precious metal. It is a never-ending circle that indicates the never-ending love of God. I want you to wear these rings as a continual reminder of your faith, the confession you have made to each other. Take this ring and place it on her finger and say this to her. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Say this. With this ring, with this ring, I be wed. I be wed. It is a token of my love for you. It is a token of my love for you. And a token of my <coughs> faith. Um, Say it is a token of my faith. And a token of my faith. That I release now. That I release in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Chris, as a reminder, this ring represents a never-ending sign of your love. It is to be, never to be a shackle. This woman stands by your side as your helpmeet, not under your feet. To Sierra, take this ring and place it on his finger. And say this, with this ring, with this ring I, be wed. I be wed 
I give it as a token, I give it as a token of my faith. my faith. I believe with all my heart, I with all my heart that, this is forever. that this is forever. It is my love, is my love and, my faith and my faith to you in Jesus' name. You guys join in right hands? <laughs> this is the important part. As a representative of our Lord Jesus Christ before Almighty God, and by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, you are one together. I now pronounce you husband and wife. And Chris, you may kiss your bride. Now I want to read a, a blessing from God's word to Chris and Sierra. They understand about the blessing of God. When you get married before God, it's a union that God blesses you, that you become one. And he also helps you throughout your life. If you try to do it yourself, then you're going to have even a greater struggle. You might have times in your life where, where it's hard, but if you stick together and look together for encouragement and trust God, you'll come through it. And God will help you. And you'll know that his hand is upon you. You know, someone said marriage is like a, a, a cup of tea, like a tea bag. You won't know how strong it is till it gets into the hot water. Just like that tea bag has to get in hot water so it can get a flavor. Well, sometimes you might have things in your marriage that's going to come up. That's when your marriage is going to prove strong, when you look to God and you look to each other for your strength. Amen? So let me read the blessing. Galatians chapter 3 says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might be heirs of the promise of the Spirit. 1 Peter says that a man and his wife are heirs together of the grace of life. I'm going to read to you the blessing your inheritance gives. According to Deuteronomy, all these blessings will come on you and overtake you if you will hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. It says, Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. That's talking about children. And the fruit of thy ground. The fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. And I know that's talking about... Uh, you know, in, the, in their day, the li livelihood they had, but whatever your livelihood is, God will bless it. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Talking about your bank accounts. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee seven ways. The Lord shall open unto you his good treasure, the head the heaven to give rain unto the land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only and not beneath, if thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day. So I'm going to ask you to, the congregation can stand. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask them to turn and face the congregation with great pleasure. I announce to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. King. They're now married. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you.